I hope you guys had a good Easter. Um, I've been really busy studying biology lately. Um, yeah, this is why I've been kind of aloof. It's giving me a lot of ideas for videos and stuff like that and knowledge I'd like to share. And it's basically the fundamental of why PMF works, basically, right? So there's not a lot of research on this topic, guys. So a lot of it is going to be kind of a exploratory field for us. But anyway, I want to share this with you. I'm ready to share this now. I've hinted in a long time now that... Uh, the way PMF works, the way the induction works, the way the waveform works has nothing to do with what the world is talking about. And I'm going to try in the simplest of term possible to show you guys uh, what I'm talking about. So I made a slideshow and I'm going to narrate it as I go along. And then just, just bear with me, just follow the process and hopefully by the end it'll make sense too. Welcome to my blackboard. Okay, so the way we generate the signal is we start with the PWM, right? And in this case, we'll use the Nexion because that's the best example for right now. And then we go to the H bridge. Um, the H bridge has a specific logic, and the logic is located where the direction PWM and ground is. So that's the way the Nexion talks to the H bridge. And then the H bridge is an output that takes that signal and then sends it out. Now, it sends it out to what? Well, simply put, it sends it out to the coil, right? That's what it does. So now there's an electrical current and voltage, volt amp, that goes through the coils. Now, this is where the real magic happens. There's an induction that happens. And what's induction? It's wireless, wireless electrical transfer, basically. And then that induction basically goes into your body after that, right? So we're going to focus mainly on the overhaul thing but like mainly we're going to talk about the induction and that's where science i think uh, fails and what effects it has on your body so there's some vernacular some wording right um you don't have to memorize this yeah that's okay we're just we're just going to go over it quickly so the amplitude is the height of a waveform and we're going to talk about the, the square waveform all the time right the pulse width is your duty cycle basically so to speak right and then you got your positive half and your negative half like I said you don't have to worry about this right just one cycle per period is the only thing I really want you to focus on because that's going to come back in the future okay so that basically is one Hertz so you got your rising edge which is the, the slew rate, basically, right? And then you get your trailing edge. That is also very important to understand. So, if you want to get really, really technical, right? And yes, you're going to have to memorize this. On your square wave, this is a unipolar square wave, by the way. You ready? There it goes. On, off. And that's it, right? That's all really we have to worry about. When it's on, when it's off. The duty cycle is the width of it, and the hertz is how many times that cycle repeats itself per second. We're going to go over that again. Just don't worry. Okay, now let's get that out of the way. The Nexion does a PWM, which does a square wave. That's all the Nexion can do, and that's all the ZK can do too. There is no ifs or buts about that. That's all we can do. Now, they both have a few difference. The Nexion can do two square wave at the same time. They have to be the same frequencies, but they can be different duty cycle. While the ZK only does one, and you can adjust the frequency, and you can adjust the duty cycle of it. Okay, so that's the main difference between the two. The H bridge that we use um, with the logic, what comes out of it, we can get many different type of output. And that's really what we're going to talk about. Type 1. So if we send a signal to the logic of the H bridge, so you got off, and then obviously on, and it just carries on like this, right? So, so far, it's not too, too complicated. Now, there's a type 2 that we can get. And 
basically it, it looks funky right but we can do this with the H bridge so what that means you got off and then you got on and then you got another on and then you got an off now I don't know if you see we're reversing polarity so this would be plus 5 volts this would be minus 5 volts in our case 0 volt 19.5 volts and then you got the type 3 which is the same idea but slightly different so now you got 19.5 volt positive you go back to off then you got 19.5 volts negative then it gets back up to 0 volt off and then 19.5 volt positive and then off, and then 19.5 volt negative. What we're doing basically is we're reversing polarity. That's the beauty of a uh, age bridge. Now, let's look at all three waveform together. And you'll see what all makes sense in a second here. Just don't panic about this. So you get your type one, which is simple on off, on off, on off, on off. Then to that we had the type two, which this one gives us a reverse in polarity, right? So we have a plus on and then a minus on. So we're changing the direction at which the flow of current flows into the coil, but enough in between. The big difference between the two is you see you got two on in the row, and on the other one you got an off in between the two on. Now you're going to ask me, why do I care? Well, why do you care is because of what's coming next, is the way it's induced into um, the rest of the cell, like what does the coil make out of this, right? Because remember, you got an off on, so you got a off north, off north, off north, right? That's what the coils make. On this one, what you get is you got an off north, followed by a direct south, off north, south, off. And on type 3, remember, you got that pause in between. So what the coil makes is basically. Um, <clears throat> an off followed by a north, an off, and then followed by a south. So you got that pause in between. Now, what does your body see out of this? This is where everybody gets it wrong, right? The body sees something totally different than what we generate, right? Now remember, uh, we talk about that one cycle per period, okay? so. That's basically your frequencies. That's going to come in pretty handy here right now. So you type one. This is one hertz, basically. So you got on followed by an off. This is the induction that your body sees. A sharp rise of north, and then the induction disappears. The induction is the wireless energy transfer. But as it goes off, you generate another wave down for south. So even on the unipolar ZK, you're getting a bipolar waveform. And yes, people, that is not fly back. Okay? Remember, in magnetism, when you have a north, you have to have a south. Therefore, when we create even a unipolar waveform, we have a bipolar induction. I was reviewing the footage there. I realized we're going a little too fast. So let's, um, let's, let's slow down. Let's go over this. This is really important for you guys to understand this. This is... A DC square wave okay so right here it's on right here it's off we already talked about that okay so right here is off depending on the power supply you use I like to use the 19.5 VDC power supply for my mat right so from here to there you're gonna have 19.5 VDC this will be on all the time okay so yes you got zero volts and here you got 19.5 volts now, that's what your coils see, right? So you go from the Nexian to the age bridge. So Nexian to the age bridge to your coil. Okay, now here to there, this is what your coil sees, 19.5 volts. But your body, through the wireless induction, the wireless mm. energy transfer, right? That's not what your body sees, okay? Remember, induction only happens when there's a change. The change is this. This right here is a change because it goes from 0 to 19.5 volts. That's the change. But from here to there, there is no change because it's always 19.5 volts, okay? So there is no change right here. There's a change here no change there's a change here no change okay what does your body see 
Let me go get the next slide. Let's do this. Let's go mark up. Okay. So remember, we're going from the Nexian to the edge bridge, to the coil, to your body. Right? So now we know what the coil sees. The coil sees on and off 19.5 volts. But what does your body see? This is what your body sees. He sees the change. There's a wireless induction of energy happening. Okay. Now, because this right up here doesn't change, that energy dissipates and stops being energized. Okay. And it goes down to zero right here. Okay. In reality, this curve happens really quickly, like really, 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 really quickly like that. It's just a, a quick spike. Okay. But we're not going to worry about that. We're just going for the easy to view right so even though the coil sees 19.5 volts all the time your coil right here right the body this is what the body sees it sees a quick sharp which creates a north field right there into your body from induction right now let's go to the next slide and you're going to see where the magic happens Let's mark up. Okay. So, 0 volt, 19.5 volt. From here to there is the same. There's no change. From here to there is the same. There's no change. Therefore, your body doesn't see anything. But when there's a change from here to there, there's a spike of energy transfer that happens, which goes off. And then from here... To there we go from 19.5 volt all the way down to zero volt there's another change there is a change right here therefore we induce the opposite wirelessly into our body and that's how we create the south part so there is a north part and as it goes up we create a south part whenever there is a change right here a change we also create an induction, a wireless transfer. It is not flyback voltage, guys. Do not confuse the two things, okay? There's no way, um, they're not the same, okay? We do create some flyback voltage for the purists out there. Yes, we do, right? But um, it's a different topic for a different day, okay? Remember, the laws of magnetism, whenever we have a north, we have to have a south. I hope this helps a little bit. Now let's carry on to see what the other different type of waveform gives us. Induction, wireless transfer. Type 2, this is what we get. We get a north followed by a direct south, and then because it goes back off again, we get a, a third one, which is north. So on type 2, we get hit three times. And on type 3, yeah, you guessed it, we get our normal north-south and then followed by another south north so we get hit four times in one hertz so that's the big difference between them all right on unipolar we get hit twice on the bipolar i call them linked we get hit three times all in the same one hertz okay and on the type three you're going to hit four times so i'm going to call them low medium high from now on right now this type three right here is the one that nasa generated that's the one that everybody talks about right so it's a long story short i don't think um we really like there's anybody that i know of that took time to understand this the way it is right remember what the Nexian or the ZK generates and what your body sees, there's a huge chain in there, right? And what I just showed you is what I believe is what your body sees, right? And that's kind of that's kind of the big thing, right? This NASA waveform that everybody talks about, right? We can easily replicate that with the Nexian now. It's coming out in the next uh, update. Now, depending on the waveform you generate, you either get hit with a north-south, just once, a north-south-north, 
so three hits, or a now a north, south, south, north, which would be four hits, right? And that's why I'm gonna start calling them low, medium, high, because that's that that makes more sense. Okay. So I hope this helps a lot of people understand and demystify this thing. Um, I want to start diving more into the biology side and try to explain um, a better idea how PEMF works in the future. Um, I'm really liking what I'm learning, right? And there's a definite lack of knowledge out there. Now, for you guys that want to learn how to build those things, join my Patreon. There's lots of information right there. The program and all the updates are there for free. If you do have one of my mat that I made one for you guys, right? Um, stay tuned to this YouTube channel because we will talk about, uh, I will demonstrate the latest program. Then you can send me an email and I'll send it to you guys. Okay. That's the beauty of our things. As we learn stuff and we develop, we can update the program. So it's pretty amazing. There's some really neat stuff coming up. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Be safe.